Hi, this is a 60-minute class with a standing pose emphasis. Take a comfortable seat. Place your hands together in front of your heart. Rest your thumbs lightly on your sternum and close your eyes. One of the great things about the standing postures is they help us build strength, vitality, and clarity in our alignment. The longer you hold them, the more your mind will be drawn inward, the more focused you will become, and the more endurance and strength you'll develop. Let's start with one ohm. Inhale fully. Om. Bow your head to your heart, lower your hands to your legs, lift your chin, and open your eyes. Great. Let's continue on all fours. Place your hands directly underneath your shoulders. Line the creases of your wrist up so that they're parallel with the front edge of your sticky mat. Make sure the middle of your wrist is lined up with your outer shoulder. Separate your knees a little wider than your hips and bring your big toes together. Move your navel in towards your spine to tone your belly and lift your chin up. Keep your chin up and bring your hips back to your heels. Push your hands down and forward. Move your navel in. Place your forehead and your nose on the floor. Breathe deeply. With your next inhale, come up to all fours. Make your arms very straight and strong. Keep your belly very firm. Lift your chin up. And now right behind your heart, move that part of your spine in so that the heads of your arm bones move deeper into your shoulder sockets. Turn your toes under. Lift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Shwanasana. Once you're in position, let your head hang. Push your hands down and forward to stretch your spine and move your hips up and back. Tone the muscles of your legs and stretch your heels towards the floor. Inhale fully and exhale completely. Do two more full cycles like that, inhaling and exhale. Inhale again. And exhale. Walk your hands back to your feet so that you're in a hip distance apart, Uttanasana, standing forward bend. If your legs feel a little bit tight, you bend your knees. Keep your legs very strong. Get your legs as straight as you can. Let your head hang. Place your hands on your hips. Bring your shoulders towards one another. Lift your chin up and stand up. Join your feet and your legs together. Place your hands together in front of your heart. We've got the warrior salutes next. Take your right leg and step forward into a big giant step lunge and stretch your arms up over your head. Make your left leg very strong right at your kneecap and come forward onto your left toes. Stretch up. Now lift your chin slightly. Move your throat back like you're giving yourself a double chin and take your head back. Stretch up and reach back. Look back. Stand up and place your hands on the floor. Downward facing dog pose. Inhale and exhale. Walk your hands back to your feet as you finish your exhale and fold. Place your hands on your hips your shoulders towards one another, lift your chin up and stand up. Join your feet and your legs together, place your hands together in front of your heart. Step forward with your left leg into a big giant step lunge 
and stretch your arms up over your head. Tighten your right kneecap very strong. Come forward onto your right toes. Move your navel in. Stretch up. Lift your chin slightly. Now give yourself three double chins. Go back, 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 and then look up. Stretch up. Stretch your arms along the ceiling to move back. Look back. Inhale, come on up. And with your exhale, touch your hands to the floor. Downward facing dog pose. In these opening warrior salutes, you can prioritize going up over back. Walk your hands back to your feet. They're a warm up, so if you're stiffer, stay upright. Place your hands on your hips, bring your shoulders towards one another, lift your chin and come on up. Exhale, place your hands together in front of your heart. With your right leg, take a big giant step lunge forward. Stretch up. Tighten your knee. Come forward onto your toes. Stretch up. Chin up. Throat back. Head back. Stretch up and or back. Look back as you reach back. Now stand up straight and turn over your left leg. Sit deep into your left leg. Tighten your right knee. Come forward onto your right toes and move your navel back. Stretch up. Take your chin up, slide your throat back, look up, stretch up. Again, stay up and or go back depending on the strength and flexibility of your back. And the further you go back, look with your eyes, go back. Inhale, come up. Exhale, place your hands on the floor. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog. Straighten your arms, look up and back. Exhale, down dog. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale again. And as you exhale, walk your hands back to your feet. Fold. Place your hands on your hips. Bring your shoulders towards one another. Lift your chin up and stand up. Exhale, join your hands together in front of your heart. Bring your feet and your legs together. Step forward this time with your left leg. Big giant step lunge. Stretch up with your arms. Tighten your right kneecap. Come forward to your right toes. Move your navel in. Stretch up. Lift your chin slightly. Slide your throat back. Look up and back. Stretch up with your arms and reach back. Look back. Go back. Inhale, come on up. Turn over your right leg. Sit deeply into your front leg. Come up high onto your left toes. Move your navel back. Stretch your arms up. Lift your chin up. Take your throat back. Look up. Stretch up. Go up and or back. And as you reach back, look back. Inhale, come on up. Exhale, touch down lunge. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale fully. Exhale completely. Inhale again. And as you exhale, walk your hands back to your feet and fold. Place your hands on your hips. Bring your shoulders towards one another. Lift your chin up and stand up. Exhale, Anjali Mudra. With your right leg, take a big giant step lunge forward. Stretch up. Move your ribs back. Stretch up. Look up and back. Stretch up, reach up and back. Come on up. Turn over your left leg. Sit deep. Come up high onto your toes. Stretch up. Lift your chin. Take your throat back and look up. Stretch up, reach back, look back. At a new piece, come on up. Step into your left leg and place your right shin down onto the floor, about three inches to the right and behind your left foot. Move your navel towards your spine, bring your chin to your chest, and bring your forehead to your knee. Make your arms straight and place your hands between your second toe and your big toe.
With your inhale, come upright. Again, this is one of those ones that you can go up only or go up and back. Bring your pelvis forward, move your navel in. Stretch up, look up slightly, move your throat back, then look back. Stretch up and reach back. Push down through your left heel as you go back. Reach your arms away from your hips and look back. Inhale, come on up. Place your hands on the floor, lunge. Inhale, plank. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale. And exhale. Do one more inhale. And as you exhale, walk your hands back to your feet and fold. Place your hands on your hips. Bring your shoulders towards one another. Lift your chin up and stand up. Exhale, Anjali Mudra. Last time through. Step forward with your left leg. Reach up. Tighten your right knee. Come high onto your right toes. Stretch up. Lift your chin slightly. Bring your throat back. Then look up. Stretch up and go up or back. Stand up. Turn over your right leg and sit deeply. Tighten your left knee. Come high onto your left toes. Stretch up. Lift your chin, slide your throat back, look up. Reach up and back and look back. As you go back, pull your arms back. Inhale, come on up. Step into your right leg, place your shin down onto the floor, tuck your chin to your chest, your navel to your spine. Bring your forehead to your knee and your hands between your second toe and your big toe. Inhale, come on up. Remember, you're in charge of how far back you go. Mostly stretch up. Lift your chin, take your throat back, look back. Stretch up and go back. Push down through your right heel to lift your chest up. Look back, reach back. Inhale, come on up. Exhale, place your hands on the floor. Lunge. Plank, Chaturanga Dandasana, inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog, inhale fully, and exhale completely. Inhale, come up onto the balls of your feet, exhale, bend your knees, at the end of your exhale, step or jump forward, inhale, extend your spine, look up, exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, come all the way up. Stretch your arms up over your head. Exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Let's do the 16-count sun salutation variation. We'll do one when you step back and forward with your left leg, and another one when you step back and forward with your right leg. I'll count it out and give you brief descriptions. This is position one, Anjali Mudra. Stretch up and back, two. Bend forward, place your hands on the floor, three. Squat deeply, four. Step your left leg back, five. Lift your chin up, six. Step your right leg back, seven. Lower down to eight. Push back up, position eight. Step your left leg forward, seven. Tuck your chin to your chest, six. Step forward and squat, five. Lift your hips up, four. Stand up with your hands in front of your heart, three. Now reach up and back, two. Tadasana, bring your hands around to your sides, lift your chest up, one. One more. Position one, Anjali. Two, up and back. Three, Uttanasana. Four, deep squat. Step your right leg back, lunge. Lift your chin up. Top of a push-up, seven. Chaturanga Dandasana, eight. Push back up to plank, eight. Step your right leg forward, seven. Tuck your chin, six. Step forward and squat, five. Lift your hips up, four. Stand up with your hands in front of your heart, three. Reach up and back, two. Tadasana, one. Great, you should feel a little bit of sweat coming out on your skin. It's a good sign that you're warmed up, ready to go. 
Let's do some standing poses. We start with the first four postures, crescent pose to each side, a standing back arch, and then Uttanasana to get lateral flexion to the spine, extension, and forward flexion at your hips. It's a good all-around warm-up for any series of poses that you're going to do. You can go in any direction from there. Join your feet and your legs together. Stretch your arms up over your head and interlace your hands. Extend your forefinger. That'll give you a lot of power. It's called Vira Mudra. Stretch up. As you stretch up, lift up all the way from your hips and push down through your heels. Shift your hips to your left and tilt your torso to the right. The more you shift your hips to the left and stretch your torso out in the opposite direction, the more extension you'll get evenly through your spine. Now with your next exhale, let more of the stretch come. Just soften a little bit into it, almost like your torso is like a rag doll. Then make your legs more like tin soldiers, make them real strong and firm. Now bring your left hip bone slightly forward so that your two hips are in one line. Bring your right shoulder blade forward so that your two shoulders are in one line. Move your navel in, lift your chest up, stretch your arms away from your hips, push your feet into the floor, come down and stretch. Inhale, come on up. Stretch up, reach up. You've got a lot of strength if you can keep your arms up and if you need to rest, you rest, put your arms on your hips for a moment and then go back to it. Okay, shift your hips to the right this time and tilt your torso to the left. As you shift your hips, stretch out evenly on either side. So aim yourself up to where the wall meets the ceiling. Then bring your right hip bone forward so that your two hips are in line. Bring your left shoulder blade forward so that your shoulders are in one line. Move your navel back to put weight into your heels. Lift your chest towards your chin. Reach your arms back, push your feet down, tilt. Inhale, come on up, stretch up. Okay, I'm gonna turn, but you don't need to, so this, you can get the side view. Stretch up, and now lift your chin. Slide your throat back, 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 like you're giving yourself a double chin. And then press your head back and extend out through the top of your head to take your head back. Stretch up. Now trace with your Vira Mudra all along the ceiling as far to the back wall as you can. Push down through your heels. Lift up through your chest. Stretch up with your arms. Look back with your eyes. Then reach back with your hands. Inhale, stand up. And now as you exhale, bend your knees and place your hands on your thighs. With your hands on your thighs, reach your lower ribs towards your upper knees to extend your spine as you fold forward. Now take the palms of your hands around to the backs of your legs so that your hands look like blades and your fingertips touch right behind your feet. Now, pull your elbows as far to the wall behind you as you can and as close together behind you as you can. Bring your face between your legs. Let your head hang. Keeping your belly firm against your thighs. Get your legs as straight as you can, keeping your belly along your thighs. Move your navel into your spine to support your bend. Pull with your hands to deepen your fold. Tighten your kneecaps. Roll forward into the balls of your feet to bring your hips right over your heels. Pull yourself in. Now push your fingertips into the floor to lift your shoulder blades towards your hips. Keep lifting your shoulder blades towards your hips and from your hips to your heart, down through your head, reach your spine as close to the floor as you can. Create length to reach your head down. Great, place your hands on your hips. Bring your shoulders towards one another, lift your chin up, move your navel in, and stand up. Exhale, Tadasana. Great. Next pose is Utkatasana. Stretch your arms up over your head and bring them just a little bit in front of your torso. That'll make it a little bit easier for this pose than being in the classic form. 
If you need the extra power of your hands interlaced with Vira Mudra, do so. And if your shoulders can't take this overhead arm work quite yet, you can work with your arms shoulder width apart. Inhale, stretch up. And with your exhale, sit deeply, Utkatasana. Bring your thighs down very parallel to the floor. And you may notice when that happens that you come forward into your torso. So let's, let's start to work away from that action. Squeeze your knees together. Put weight back into your heels and reach your hips back. Now move your navel in like you've got a tight pair of jeans on. And now like standing back arch, lift your chest. Lift your chest, move your navel in. Lift your chest, move your navel in. Lift your chest, move your navel in. Stretch your arms up, sit deeply, stretch high. And now stand up. Exhale, Tadasana. Awesome. Next pose, Garudasana, Eagle Pose. Take your arms out to your sides and stretch them up over your head. And now, Take your right arm underneath your left and cross at your elbows and cross at your wrists. Sit down deep. Transfer your weight to your left leg and take your right leg high up over and wrap it around. Cross at your knee and cross at your ankle. When you've sat down deep like Utkatasana, our tendency is just like an Uttanasana that we've come forward. The trick of the pose is to bring your elbows down and to lift your chest up. Squeeze your outer knees together. Pull your elbows down and lift your chest up. Put weight into your heels. Lift your chest up. Hold here. Stand up. Stretch your arms up over your head. Second side. Pull your elbows down. Bend deeply. Transfer your weight to your right leg and take your left leg high up over your thigh. Wrap at your knee, wrap at your ankle. Sit down deep. That works your legs and opens up your hip joints, your knee joints, and even your ankle joints. Now, pull your elbows down to stretch between your shoulders and lift your chest up to bring an upper back back bend action into this compression of your chest. Squeeze your outer knees together, put weight back into your heels. Hold here. Okay, release, stretch your arms up over your head, and exhale, release. Tadasana. Next pose is tree pose. Transfer your weight to your right leg, and take your left hand to the top of your thigh. Slide your hand around your leg, around your knee, down around your shin to bring your left heel as high up into your inner right thigh as possible. Place your hands together in front of your heart. Super important key for balance is to find a place about four feet out in front of you that's not moving and look at it. That's gaze. To find the midline, push your foot against your leg and your leg back against your foot, and that will steady your balance along the central channel of your body. Your third tip for balance is to push down into the floor like you're growing roots out of your feet. And from that steady rooting action, lift your chest up Hold here. Lower your right leg to the floor. Tadasana. Transfer your weight to your second leg. Take your right leg up. Bring your heel high up into your inner thigh. Your left leg is the standing leg here. Super important for a standing straight leg to be firm without being micro-bent and soft, and without being hyperextended. Tone the muscles on the front of your leg so that your kneecaps lift up. And as though you're doing an isometric hamstring curl, energetically draw your heel up towards your hip. When the front of your leg muscles are toned with the back of your leg muscles, you'll have a solid standing leg that's neither locked out in hyperextension or soft in a micro-bend. Release, Tadasana. Next pose, Trikonasana. Take your hands in front of your heart, bend your knees slightly, and step or jump your feet wide. Wiggle your feet wide until your ankles are directly underneath your wrists. Keep your left leg straight ahead and turn your right leg out. Like you just practiced in tree, make your leg muscles strong on the fronts and lift up on your kneecaps. Make your legs strong on the backs and do hamstring curl action to tone your hamstrings. 
Move your navel in and up. So that your pelvis is as neutral as possible here. Inhale. Exhale, Trikonasana. Take your right hand down to the floor so that your fingertips touch the floor on the outside of your right shin. If you can't touch with the floor, absolutely you can use a block or grab hold of your ankle. If you touch easily with your fingertips, place the palm of your hand down onto the floor and push down. Move your navel back. Spin your torso towards the ceiling from your low belly, your belly button, your ribs, your chest. Finally, turn your head and stretch up. Press down through your back leg, pull up through your top arm, inhale and come on up. Turn your right leg straight ahead, turn your left leg out. Tone the muscles of your legs on the fronts and on the backs. Move your navel in. Lift your chest up, and as you exhale, empty your breath and place your right, left hand on the floor. Use your fingertips if you need the added height. If you can press your palm flat, press your palm flat. If you need the added height beyond your fingertips, grab hold of your ankle or put your hand on a block. This pose has a twist. It's a twist that starts from this firmness of your legs, the tone of your low belly, all the way at your low belly turn, across your belly button turn, across your rib cage turn, the line of your breasts turn, your collarbones. Finally, turn your head and look up. Hold here. Press down through your back leg, pull up through your top arm, inhale and come on up. Turn your foot straight ahead. Take your hands in front of your heart. Step or jump your feet back together. Tadasana. Next pose, side angle pose, Parshvakanasana. Take your hands in front of your heart. Step or jump your feet wide. Wiggle your feet wide. Keep your left leg straight ahead. Turn your right leg out. Inhale here. Lift up on your low belly. Lift your chest up. With an exhale, bend your front leg down and sit even deeper so your front leg is a parallel line with the sticky mat and the floor. Lift up. And now, like crescent pose, stretch out, stretch up, and reach your arm up over your head. So you get a full stretch along the side. This is called side angle. Make your legs strong. And from your front heel, draw a line of energy to help you lift up on your back inner thigh so that it's not sagging towards the floor. That's gonna create space in your pelvis. Now take your tailbone and lift your low belly up. Push down through your back leg, stretch out through your left arm until you feel even the skin along the top side of your body stretch. Press down through your back leg, pull up through your top arm, inhale and come on up. Turn your right leg straight ahead, turn your left leg out. Lift your chest as you lift your low belly up. And with an exhale, sit deep. Now exhale again and sit even deeper so that you yield into the front leg to get the depth for the posture. Lift up again and now stretch out through your bottom side, stretch up through your top arm and reach your arm up over your head behind your ear. Draw your left heel towards your right arch. That'll tone your legs. And from your left heel, lift up on your right inner thigh. And lift your inner thigh to your outer thigh and your outer thigh to where the wall meets the ceiling behind you. Now move your navel in and up and take your tailbone deeper into your body. Push down through your back leg, stretch out through your top arm and turn towards the ceiling, look up. Inhale, come on up. Turn your left leg straight ahead. Take your hands in front of your heart. Step or jump your feet back together. <laughs> okay, next pose is Virabhadrasana 1, and we're going to work with that same movement of our head back that we've been working on since the very opening Warrior Series. Okay, take your hands in front of your heart and step or jump your feet wide. Turn your palms up. 
by rotating your arms deep in their sockets. Stretch your arms up over your head, join your palms and stretch up. If you need to add Viramudra, use Viramudra. If you need your shoulder width apart modification, do that as well. Turn your left leg strongly in. Turn your right leg out. Squeeze your legs together to help you square your hips. And for most of us right here, our pelvis starts to turn down. Move your navel in and up so that your hip bones point as straight ahead as possible. For some of us, they won't make it all the way around. That's okay. Do your best, and now move your rib cage around. Stretch up. Keep stretching up with your arms and your torso, and with an exhale, just like Parjvakanasana, sit down deep into your front leg. Then push your right foot more into the left foot more into the floor and sit deeper again so that you yield into the full posture. Stretch up. Lift your chin. Take your throat back, back, back till your head moves behind your arms. And then look up. Stretch up. Sit deeper as you stretch higher and hold here. Straighten your front leg. Now stretch up as you turn. You build a lot of strength and endurance by keeping your arms active. Turn your right leg in strongly. Turn your left leg out. Now squeeze your legs towards one another to get your hips as square to the wall in front of you as you can. Lift up on your low belly so that your hip bones face that wall rather than the floor or the baseboard. Stretch up. With an exhale, sit deeply into your left leg. Then yield some more and let the pose take form in you. You take the form of the pose, stretch up. Now lift your chin. Bring your throat back, back, back. Then press your head back as you look up and stretch up. Sit a little deeper. Stretch up higher. Hold here. Stretch up. Stand up. Turn your feet. Place your hands in front of your heart. Now step or jump your feet back together. Tadasana. Great. Next pose is Parshvottanasana. And Parshvottanasana, fix this mic. Parshvottanasana means side or flank. Uttan, intense, so it's an intense stretch to the sides, even though the first place we usually feel it in is our legs. It becomes a side stretch when we add the arms. So I'm going to turn around and we'll set this up like this so that you can see what my arms are doing. First stage is to interlace your hands behind your back. If that goes well, grab hold of your elbows. If you can grab hold of your elbows behind your back, try the reverse prayer position. Swing your arms behind you in prayer and join them together. One of those three options usually will work for you. And if you need a more moderate option, place your hands on your hips and squeeze your elbows towards one another. With your hands behind you, bend your knees and step or jump your feet wide. Turn your left leg in strongly, turn your right leg out. Like you did in Virabhadrasana 1, squeeze your legs towards one another and lift up on your low belly so that your hip bones face straight ahead. Now lift your chin, take your throat back, press your head back as you lift your head up and chin up, look back. Inhale, stand up. And as you exhale, lift up on your kneecap, lift up on your lower belly, push through the ball of your right foot like you're stepping on a gas pedal and go forward. Now, turn on your heels. Stay in your forward bend. Turn on your heels to turn your right leg in strongly. Turn your left leg out and square your torso up over your left leg. Now, as you inhale, stand up. Squeeze your legs towards one another. Lift your chin up. Move your throat back. Press your head back as you look back. Now inhale, come upright. Super important here is to tighten at your kneecap, tighten at your upper outer thigh, 
at your buttocks cheek and push through the ball of your foot. That helps you with the hyperextension tendency in this posture. Keep your legs strong and support the weight of your torso with your belly, not with your front knee joint. Bend forward. Hold here. Now turn to your right, a quarter turn. Stand up. Step your feet or jump your feet back together. Stretch your arms out to your sides. Turn them in your socket so your palms face up. Stretch your arms up over your head and then lower them to your sides. Tadasana. Great. Next pose, Uttanasana, standing forward bend. We've already done this once in class, so we're going to do it again, only we're going to do it with a, from this bent knee position even a little deeper than we did earlier. So squat down nice and deep. And now, place your hands by the sides of your feet. So you may need to squat, squat down quite considerably. With your hands, push down and forward, and that'll help you tone your belly. Keep your belly firm on your thighs, even as you tone it. Straighten your legs more and more with your hands pushed down and forward. Bring your face right between your shins. Tighten your knees very strong. Roll forward into you, the balls of your feet so that your hips are stacked right over your heels. Breathe here. With strong legs, place your hands on your hips. Bring your shoulders towards one another. Inhale and stand on up. Exhale, Tadasana. Take one step to the front of your sticky mat. Stretch your arms up over your head with a big inhale. Exhale, place your hands on the floor. With your left leg, take a big step back to a lunge. Then downward facing dog pose. From downward facing dog pose, Let's do a pigeon stretch. Take your right leg forward to pigeon. Let's do a moderate form of this with your heel close to your left hip. Do your best to get your hips as square as possible. That's the most important part of this pose is to keep your hips square. And what we're really going for is a stretch in your right buttocks. Place your fingertips on the floor out in front of you. Bend your elbows up to the sky. Now move your navel in and reach your chest towards the floor. Inhale, straighten your arms, and exhale, pause. Now, sit into your right hip, and take your left leg so that your outer left ankle comes to the front of your right knee. Point your right toes straight back behind you, and place both sitting bones on the floor. Take your left hand right behind your body, and stretch your arms up, right arm up, inhale. With an exhale, take your elbow to your outer knee, Take the pulse point of your wrist down towards the floor to twist more firmly. Look over your left shoulder. Next pose is Janushir Sasana with a fold between your legs. Take your left leg to the back of your mat. Bring your right heel and hips quite close together. Like you did in pigeon, take your fingertips out in front of you. Bend your elbows up, move your navel in, and bring your chest towards the floor. Straighten your arms, sit up. Now take your right hand, to the floor and stretch your hips up with your left arm up over your head. Some stargazer pose. It's another good lateral stretch for your torso. Push down through your back leg and stretch out through your top arm. 
In a lot of the sequences I write, I put these poses in and call them neutralizing postures. The idea is in our standing poses, we worked our hips real strong, and we get a chance to do a little stretching to counterbalance some of the strength work that we did in the standing postures. We get a twist to the spine and opening in the inner thighs as well, and a good stretch along the spine here. Downward facing dog pose. Breathe deeply. All right, take your left leg forward. Let's do the same thing on the second side. Pigeon prep. Square up with your hips. Support some of your weight with your fingers on the floor. And now move your navel in. Reach your chest towards the floor. Once you've got your forehead on the floor, you're folded forward well, you can take the weight off your arms and stretch your palms out in front of you and push down and deepen the posture quite nicely. Place your hands on either sides of your sticky mat. Push up. Ardha Matsya Andrasana variation. Sit into your left leg. Take your right leg around so that your outer right ankle comes to your outer left knee. Point your left toe straight back behind you. Make sure your right sitting bone is on the floor as well as your left. Take your right hand behind you. Stretch your left arm up. Inhale. Keep the height that this gives you. Exhale and take your elbow to your outer right knee. Bring the pulse point of your wrist down towards the floor. Move your navel in towards your spine. Exhale and twist to your right. Look over your right shoulder. And release. Take your right leg to the back edge of your sticky mat. Fold your left leg in to your hip and bow forward. Johnny's your sasana between your legs. This is one we put into the pose to prepare the hips for some opening and to do a little bit of stretching into the inner thighs. It's a great preparation for Janu Shirsasana, great way to access the inner thigh opening needed for some of the deep hip stretches. With your inhale, sit up. Stargazer, place your left hand down, lift your hips up. Stretch up. Place your hand down on the floor, downward facing dog pose. Lower your knees to the floor. Separate them a little wider than your hips. Bring your big toes together. Lift your chin up. Lift of their chin does a couple things. It puts a curve into our cervical spine and helps us establish the natural curve of the lumbars. Move your navel in to support the curve on the front. Keep that, bring your hips back to your heels. Now with your hands, push down and forward. When you feel your hips get heavy against your heels, move your navel in more and tone your belly more. Now keep that and stretch your arms out in front of you till you feel a stretch, crawl them out until you feel a stretch come to your shoulders. Place your forehead and your nose on the floor. Good, come on up. Cross your ankles behind you. Stretch your legs out in front of you. Dandasana. Okay, let's lie down. Supta Press your left leg into the floor and interlace your hands behind the back of your right thigh. So it's a variation on Supta Press down through the back of your left leg. Press back through the back of your right leg. And this work in your legs helps seat your femur bones into your hip sockets well. And when that happens, it's a good release for the pelvis, good release for the low back. Switch legs. 
Press the back of your right thigh as far down to the sticky mat as you can with your hands interlaced around your left leg. Push the back of your left leg into your interlaced thighs. Hands. Keep that and now straighten your left leg. Release. Suki Randrasana, next pose. Place your left foot on the floor, take your right ankle and cross it onto your left thigh. Fold your legs closer into your belly, thread your hands through the middle of your legs like you're threading a needle. That's the name of the pose. Thread the needle pose. First stage is to interlace your hands around the back of your thigh like you just practiced. If you need more stretch, a deeper fold, take your hands around the front of your shin. With your heel, push down towards the floor against your forearm. You'll feel your hamstring tone. Keep that, inhale. And as you exhale, bring your legs closer to your belly till you feel a stretch really come to your outer right hip. Switch legs. Take your left ankle on your right knee. Thread your hands through the middle of your legs. First stage, clasp behind your thigh. Second stage, clasp around the front of your shin. Push your heel down towards the floor into the forearm of your left arm to tone your hamstring. Keep that. As you exhale, bring your legs closer in. and release. Stretch your left leg long along the floor. Bend your right knee, grab hold of your big toe and your first two fingers, or use a strap around your foot. Straighten your right leg. First stage, Supta Padangustasana. Make your leg muscles very strong. Stretch through the ball of your foot until the sole of your foot runs parallel to the ceiling so that you don't pull your heel up towards the ceiling or point your toe, but you have a nice neutral foot. Inhale here. And exhale. Stretch your leg more. Release. Second side. The standing poses build strength in our legs, and they are also developing flexibility in relationship to our strength. When we do these postures on the floor, the second part of class today, stretch your leg up. We're taking the weight-bearing function out of the, standing po of the, out of the posture and working a little bit more directly on flexibility. Even all the while, do create toe so that your muscles have an optimal amount of protection as you stretch them and work for release. Breathe here. Okay, release your leg, join your feet together. Next pose is windshield wiper pose. Bend your knees, point your knees up to the ceiling and separate your feet a little wider than your hips. Stretch your arms up over your head with your palms face up. Keeping your legs bent, lower both knees to the right. You can stay here as first stage. Let's add some activating cues here. Flare your fourth and fifth toes on your left foot. Roll your left hip bone towards your belly button. From your inner left pubic bone, reach back to your inner left sitting bone to take your inner leg back. Then widen your left thigh away from the midline to broaden across the back of your pelvis. Now take your tailbone in and lift your low belly up. Take your right foot, hook it onto your left thigh. Take your right hand, grab hold of your left wrist. With your right leg, stretch out to extend your left leg away from your hip. And with your right arm, Pull your left arm away from your hip to stretch more. Release, switch sides. With both legs bent, lower your legs to the left. Flare your fourth and fifth toes on your right foot. Roll your right hip bone towards your belly button. Your right inner thigh back from your pubic bone to your sitting bone. 
widen your thigh away from the midline. Now you've created space. Take your tailbone in and lift up on your low belly. Take your left foot, hook it onto your right knee. With your left hand, grab your right wrist. Now everything is set up well. We just want to add the stretch. With your left leg, extend your knee away from your hip. With your left hand, pull your right arm. And then release. Place both feet on the floor. Hug your knees up into your chest for Pavan Mukhtasana. Wrap your arms around the outsides of your legs and grab your elbows into your hands. If you can't grab your elbows, you grab your forearms or your wrists. Get as tight of a grip as you can. Great. Okay, release that. Place your feet on the floor. One at a time, stretch your legs out in front of you with your legs straight. And then let your legs fall open. If you need to widen your feet a little bit to feel more comfortable, do so. Now take your hands off to your sides and you're looking for an angle of your upper arm with your torso that's about 30 degrees from your body. And for most of us, because of the shape of our forearms, that'll turn our arms out quite considerably away from our bodies. Okay, it's a basic setup for Shavasana. Take a few moments to rest here and let the work that you did integrate. Surrender the weight of your body to the floor, but you feel every contact point grow just a little bit more solid, a little bit more firm. And as you feel the weight of your body settle, grow heavier. Imagine that happening with your eyes, so that your eyes in their sockets grow heavy, like a stone sinking to the very bottom of a pool, slowly down, away from the surface of the water, to the depths where it's still. Rest for a few minutes here in your own depths, and let go. Slowly deepen your breath. Gently bend your knees. Carefully roll to your right side. Then roll a little bit more towards the floor. Use your arms and push yourself up to seated. Sit for a moment with your eyes closed. Place your hands together in front of your heart. I talked briefly about the standing poses physically being those postures that build strength, endurance, determination, and clarity. And take a moment in your own heart to imagine how those qualities might manifest in your life off your yoga mat.
Let's close this practice with one ohm. Inhale. Namaste.